but we're living in a light matrix. And that's what the Adinkra codes also prove. So Professor James Gates Jr. in University of Maryland, former uh, scientific advisor to President Obama, just to give you like this guy, he's not just like a jackpot or something. He's like okay. a real dude, you know? <laughs> yeah. And he put together a team of the most incredible supersymmetry and theoretical physicists in the world, mm -hmm. like the top brains in the world on this. And they started analyzing what is the ether of space-time? What is this soup that we're living in that we're inhabiting this universe? What is it? What is it made of? What is, what's powering it? They discovered something called Adinkra codes, which go back to the ancient Dogon tribe from Mali, Africa. The original inhabitants of the land of Cam then moved to Mali later after they were thrown, thrown out, uh, taken over at one point. But they still kept this ancient knowledge in, in, in Mali about these Adinkra codes and they would draw these patterns. Well, he discovered that these patterns are actually mathematical codes. And these are not just any mathematical code. They're actually the codes that describe the ether of space-time itself. They're error-correcting codes, the same exact codes that run our search engines and web browsers that we're using right now to look at the image. There's coding behind that screen that runs this, what we just did. And guess what? It's the same code that runs the universe. So we discovered that we're living in a, that we're living in a programmed light matrix. There's a software programmer that has written this code. So these are Denker codes. These are depicting the nature of reality. And they actually are mathematical programming codes. They're a special type of code, though. They're error correcting codes. The same type that that Google browser is running on is the same thing that runs the universe. Well, if you understand that we're living in a fractal holographic light matrix, it doesn't mean we're not real. It just means that there is a creator or creators that we're living in something that was created, just like the ancient texts and all the scribes and, and biblical texts and everything else says. But it tells us, wow, this is the method of the creation. Now we're getting closer to understanding what we really are. We understand now that consciousness isn't made inside this avatar body, that the avatar body doesn't even exist. That consciousness is a stream of something coming from somewhere else and is mm. being picked up in this matrix with this coding. If you took all the humans on Earth, there's 8 billion humans on Earth. If I took all 8 billion humans and removed the empty space between their atoms, I can fit every human into a sugar cube. One sugar cube can hold all 8 billion of us. You could take, you can see atoms are empty space. So if you take the empty space out, you collapse it into one sugar cube. All 8 billion can fit in one sugar cube. What's here? There's only one consciousness, it seems. And it looks, it's like a radio station that's transmitting out a frequency from a higher dimension. Our avatar bodies pick up that frequency. You're 99.1, I'm 99.2, he's 99.3, but it's still coming from the same source. And so we're all coming from the same source. It's like the universe has found a way to live subjectively through multiple entities, but not even through entities, even through objects that we consider to be man-made. Because every atom we know now in quantum physics is also conscious. We're living in a simulation. This is an actual simulation. What we've done now with the, uh, the video game, uh, no Man's Sky It's got 80 quadrillion Worlds in there It's a never ending game Created by I think 12 college students Fits on one DVD And they're going to add AI into it Which means that the beings and the animals And everything else in there They're going to become conscious Also the other video game The Sims there They're talking about adding consciousness to the Sims And adding AI in there So Eventually, these Sims are going to start asking questions. Who are we? Where, where do we come from? What is this that we're living in this construct? Is there a Big Bang? Yeah, the Big Bang is when we hit the power button and turned you on. That's the Big Bang. Mm. That's when everything went out. Yeah. So, you know, they can then maybe even begin to write programs in the Sims program to create their own universe. So there's multiple layers of reality. I don't think we're even close to base reality. But what I think is happening here is the reason why it's not specific, like, again, you can you control it in a certain level. But what's cool, I think, is that the universe itself is using us to figure out what it's like to be Billy Carson, what it's like to be you, what it's like to be this microphone, what it's like to be a person that's living in poverty, what's it like to be a person that's living rich, what it's like to be an inventor, an explorer, what is it like to be all these different things, mm -hmm. what is it like to be a blade of grass, what is it like to be a rock, and I think all that data is being transmitted back to source in real time. I trust you enjoyed this brief video. Billy Carson's one of my favorite speakers, and he'll be back on the show soon. Please support me via PayPal or Patreon if possible. A new video will be out soon. And remember, you can sign up to my free email list if you wish to be notified of all future videos. All links are below. I'll see you tomorrow. Namaste.